I'm returning to my series on the 36 decans of Transcendental Kabbalah. The idea of this series is that I map the 36 concepts or topics of uh, my not just philosophy system, but sort of total artwork system in its conceptual capacity, uh, conceptual dimension, uh, onto the 36 decans of the zodiac. And then as the year unfolds, uh, there's, a, there's a time, a, a 10 day stretch of time, so sort the of decan is, uh, during which I contemplate that topic and then do a video on it. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I've, I've never heard of anyone doing that before, and uh, I, I can do it over and over again every year. And uh, so that uh, what I like about it is that it's an opportunity for the system to refresh each year. Um, so it's not artificial. Um, like when you write something in a book and your ideas have actually evolved. So, um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but it, it is the case that I haven't posted since mid-June. Uh, I did a, a solo art exhibition in July and was sort of posting on each piece during that month. I'll put a link to the documentation of that in the description box. And then we were on tour in August. And so I missed a number of decans. And the decan that starts tomorrow is the last decan devoted to transcendental black metal, actually. But before we get to that, I wanted to at least gloss what was missed. It, it was really important stuff. So um, the last video I did was on axiology. Uh, which looks like I actually did that one late too because um, that was scheduled for late May but I ended up posting it in mid-June um, and axiology is the first of four arenas of discourse in the philosophy system portion of the overall system, axiology, metaphysics, cosmogony, eschatology. So I didn't make a video about metaphysics or cosmogony or eschatology, which is when cancer began. Um, and then the next four decans were devoted to drama. So second decan of cancer was going to be a sort of history and theory of art. The third decan of cancer was going to be about arc work. Um, then the first decan of Leo was going to be, be about aesthetics. And uh, the fourth decan, the second decan of Leo was going to be about um, heaven from the perspective of drama. Then we were going to get into music. And uh, the first, the third decan of Leo, the first topic in music was going to be just a, about the history of music from my perspective. The second one, the first decan of Virgo, was going to be about the burst beat. The second decan was going to be about general tremolo. And then, and then we would have arrived at what we'll start on next decan, hopefully, which is 
uh, music's relation to heaven generally. So, so basically, most of my philosophy system I didn't speak about, and then the in, my entire theory of drama. Um, it's kind of too bad that I didn't stick with it because I was doing that during my. I was, I mean, maybe it's better to. Anyway, I was. Uh, midwifing and uh, handmaidening my art show during that time, and uh, and then kind of notable that then we, we went on tour during the music decan, the music section. Actually, that's super cool. Um. But so. Let me just sort of summarize some stuff. So metaphysics. So the last video I made was called On the Glory of Truth, Goodness, Beauty, and Justice. I don't remember what I said in the video, but I know that it was in part about the transcendentals. Uh, truth, goodness, beauty, and justice uh, representing an absolute horizon for philosophy and practice. Um, though one can imagine with Nietzsche giving birth to new values, um, and one can imagine with Marx uh, sort of considering these values as uh, um, implements of exploitation, that should be overthrown, um, they're still there. And they still structure, uh, they still structure the work of Nietzsche and Marx. Um, and then more generally, I might have not even gotten to this in that video, but like the basic idea of axiology is that there are three dimensions of the soul, Rainer Ray, Kel Valhall, and the Genesis Call which are basically, they basically correspond to the symbolic, the imaginary, and the real, and Lacan. And there are three states that the soul can attain in, uh, by virtue of its maturity, in, in virtue of sort of how well those three dimensions are, um, are vibrating together, you could say. And hyperborean is when you are genuinely uh, enslaved to a false idol um, or multiple false idols. Transcendental is uh, a minimal degree of real freedom where you can autonomously legislate uh, your own laws, but it's really only at the uh, personal level like you can still be operating inside of ideology uh if you are at the transcendental level um because maybe you don't have a full you're not able to be truly critical necessarily um because you don't have a picture in your mind of how the world actually works and so you can't you can't transcend so society's norms uh as such maybe you can not be so maybe you cannot be enslaved to toxic norms that you might have inherited but you um don't necessarily have the uh sort of cognitive there's a sort of, there's a certain sort of intellectual component to really critiquing society and um but you need more than critical theory uh you need hardcore philosophy um, and so it's by virtue of that insight about the hylogenic, if I didn't say the hylogenic is the highest, the highest uh, state of the soul, one that can see hylogen. I've got to figure out whether I say it hylogen or hylogen out loud. Uh, I have, I've never really decided, but it's always spelled the same way for now. Um, 
by virtue of the ultimate insight of axiology that the most desirable and greatest state of the soul is hylogenic, um, it follows that one requires an account of metaphysics and of cosmogony and of eschatology. Um, because, you know, your, your, your account of metaphysics and cosmogony and eschatology, um, there's no question of any one person ever arriving at, like, the uh, answer to those questions. But, um, you know, just sort of surveying those fields and doing your best to construct an account um, is enough to be living in a hyalogenic state of consciousness, which isn't to say that it's entirely subjective. Like, there is some kind of collective criterion of truth for, for each of these. But so metaphysics is the topic of, um, uh, really, there's two really important meanings to it. One is just that it describes the absolute, you know, that which is really unchanging and that which is most elemental. It describes it in an intelligible way. Um, and it's, yeah, it's like the most basic, the most basic dimensions of reality um, and the most permanent, the, the firmest ones. That's more of a philosophical definition of metaphysics. Um, a more spiritual one would be that uh, metaphysics is an account of that which transcends uh, transcends ordinary perception. So uh, that would include the nature of God and the angels. Um, and, and, and what's shared by those is that they're, they're both... They're both about that which is not physical. And um, there's this kind of indiscernibility between like, like m when you're doing metaphysics, you, it's really hard. You can't designate what you're talking about in advance because it's not logic. It's not physics. Um, you know, if, if you could give a coherent account of it, you would. Um, but it's the the point of it is that it's sort of at this intersection and um and the the key the key so that's an account of what metaphysics is what my metaphysical theory is is fundamentally that there are four alimonies which are four layers of reality and they're called uh sem elosine and anon and Ololan, um, uh, Ololan is God, uh, but it's it's not all of God actually, uh, because Hak uh, actually transcends thought altogether. But Ol, um, but uh, yeah, so Ololan is uh, a sphere of sort of pure spirituality. Um, where all things, like it's it's this sort of force in world history that's trying to make the world better, but it also contains all things. Um, Ananon is the sphere of um, ideas and innovation uh, where like true genius, whether it's prophetic or artistic or scientific, um, whether gen the place where genuinely brand new insights are born that that like really alter world history, it, 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 where where paradigm shifts are born, um, where where theories live, uh, styles live, so forth. Um, LLC is humanity's economic being, um, as well as its emotional libidinal being so it's sort of the interrelationship between 
uh, humans that, you know, they're in power relationships and relationships of love and they're producing society at a material and libidinal level uh, and re reproducing it. And then Sem is, it's basically, uh, you know, it, it's the lowest, it's where, uh, it, it's where like simulacrally, like, like there's, it's sort of the realm of false images or dead theories or, um, or and like sort of toxic dynamics. You know, th this is the world of sort of uh, bad karma. You know, it's, it's sort of the, the, the place that like a bodhisattva sort of wants to enter and like uh, save people from. Um, and, you know, I would almost say it's not all bad, but really what I mean is that it's, you know, there's something deeply human about this sphere where it sort of creates the suffering that then creates space for transcendence. So in a way, it's the most human sphere. Uh, so that's, th that's the essence of my metaphysical theory. And then cosmogony, so this is the next decan, which starts on June 11th, um, is a theory of time, um, a theory of history, so this topic can be approached uh, in a number of ways, a number of counts given. You can think of it in terms of like, um, you know, uh, what is the general tendency of, um, you know, society's history or uh, human history, the history of life on earth, the history of the universe, uh, or you can conceive of it as transcendental history. Um, so like uh, where there's actually a sort of metaphysical historical vector that isn't the Big Bang or isn't like evolution or isn't any particular feature of uh, human nature. Um, and from the from from that approach, cosmogony is sort of opposed to metaphysics. Um, metaphysics would be an account of um, more of a Kantian transcendental, uh, where what's being described is not ontic, but it's uh, intelligible. And cosmogony, the transcendental cosmogony, would be giving an account of something you could say that's beyond being or underneath being um, or maybe it's an account of nothingness or becoming um, and uh, what's you know the, the the feature of the world that I really focus on in my account is uh, just how much society is changing uh, which clearly has um, a technological component. Um, I'm not going to even outline my account. I might have outlined it in my original assessment of the uh, of all 36 decans, which is I think the intro video to this page. And uh, if not, I'll just get to it next year. Um, I don't want this video to be too long. But you get the idea. So you need an account of being, um, and then an account of time, um, of human history, so that you sort of have an analysis of, uh, you know, what, uh, like what what's happening, what's happening in history, that is going to continue happening no matter what, or is arguably going to continue happening no matter what you know like what 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 force do we have the opportunity of sort of joining with versus resisting um or what materials do we have to work with if we're hoping to construct a new world you know how how, how do we get really grounded in uh what the world is 
uh, at an absolute and at a contingent level um, so that uh, when we pass on to the next topic, eschatology, we know what we're working with. So eschatology is traditionally that term refers to uh, a vision of heaven, um, you know, a vision of sort of the fulfillment of human history. And you can have a messianic approach to that, uh, where you're really just describing what's going to happen, what heaven will look like, how, how our bodies will be different, how experience will be different, how our relationship to God will be different. Um, and uh, I take a lot of inspiration from those visions, um, but I see heaven as something that can be, that sort of must be, constructed. So so it has a divine dimension. Um, it has to be constructed with God's help. But there's a, a, a you know strongly humanist element to my vision of heaven. That's why it's apocalyptic humanism, where uh, you know human genius, the, the capacity for art and science and uh, problem solving uh, you know, th those capacities should be uh, harnessed in the service of the project of building heaven. And, um, and I'll just say that the, 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 the structuring principle of heaven, in my view, is that there are four laws, sovereignty, hierarchy, emancipation, individuation, I've already talked about this in a couple of videos, so I don't think I need to go into detail here. But um, and and that's pretty much the full within the limitations of just philosophy. You, know, you start with the theory of the soul, the theory of its sort of highest potential, and then you sort of uh, the rest of it is sort of an attempt to sort of activate that highest potential because the highest potential requires deep philosophical work to sort of become able to conceive of and desire and construct heaven. And heaven will be made out of uh, music, drama, and philosophy because every, um, every human creation that is truly connected to genius can actually be categorized as one of those three things. Um, and so uh, more is, you know, we think of music, drama, and philosophy as sort of restricted domains, but, um, and there being lots of other types of activity. But in my view, there are only those three things, and that will become fully clear in heaven. So that's why then the next, um, n now that we've done philosophy, the next two uh, sets of topics are about drama and about music. Uh, so to reduce the four decans about drama to, to just two topics for now, um, the, the two dimensions of drama that I'm really interested in I call arc work and aesthetics. And arc work is a narrative dimension of art and um, it transcends uh, you know it trans like it includes the practice of creating say like novels or films or uh, you know RPGs or whatever but it also includes um, historical narrative uh, whether secular or sacred, um, that just sort of, you know, the story that society societies tell themselves about uh, their sort of reason for existing and their goals. Um, and the key story is the story of, of Christ, you know, for in, in some sense, Christ's uh, life, death, and resurrection is a fundamental story. And so, Arc work pre-exists uh, my account of arc work 
Um, but you know, I I have a specific, you know, I I have a specific uh, sort of historical narrative with characters in it that have names and so forth, and that interfaces with uh, with church with uh, the history of the world that uh, Christianity takes as given. Um, if you know about my art show, you know there's a lot of focus on uh, apparitions of the Virgin Mary, like, you know Fatima and uh, the Lady of All Nations, and um, various prophecies. So that's that's sort of the representational dimension of drama as a practice, uh, and then aesthetics is the, I guess, practical or intensive dimension of drama and my categories are act, scene, stage, and motive and this involves uh, you know, but basically uh, you know, con like it's sort of pra an aestheticized, a highly aestheticized version of practical reason um, where one is, you know, if if you're attached to light, uh, you know, if 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 you're truly living, if you're in one of the higher uh, ethical planes, then there are operations for you to perform um, where your spirit and your relationships and your world is evolving in a uh, sort of healthy um, healthy way that's connected to God. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that, that's the essence of aesthetics. And, um, and then, you know, in heaven, drama will be comprised basically of those two dimensions of art or drama or whatever and they will but will be sort of more fully conscious that even in the non-aesthetic spheres that that's what's going on so then we turn to music and uh, the first decan is a history of music which um, I'll, I'll be really I'll really enjoy like actually writing when I finally get to it because I don't think that there's been a satisfactory history of music that includes rock music and classical music um, within the horizon that also includes you know court music and sacred music and, and that kind of thing. Um, perspectives are, are really really strangely limited uh, and siloed uh, in that domain. But then the two um, uh, and then, of course, my style of music is transcendental black metal. I'm not even going to start. But anyway, so th the two musical techniques I have are general tremolo and the burst beat. And those techniques have a kind of social ethical resonance, um, even though they're also literally music techniques. And, um, and then, the f okay, well, so we'll stop there. The fourth decan of um, the topic of music, transcendental black metal, is what music will look like in heaven. So I guess that's actually the next thing that I'll um, cover, so I won't summarize it because I can actually do it. <laughs>